Hello, hello, everybody. I am Neon Icy Wings. I have my tea. And we are going to be continuing our Legend of Spyro the Eternal Night playthrough. I guess since we got fairly far in, as far as I'm aware, we're probably over halfway, according to how many breath abilities I got. Uh, we, I figured we might as well wait and see what the trailer is, because they don't have opening cinematics here. They have trailers. It's kind of interesting that they open with the pirate arena. And, like, focus on the pirate arena. I mean, if you're going to have a game about combat... So definitely a good thing that we didn't watch it because it spoils that evil combat happens. But so far... <laughs> although I do have my finger over the start button, where if this <laughs> trailer opening dares show something, I can indeed. Well, that looks different. <laughs> That's also... How dare you have apparently the electricity ability on the... Uh, the pirate ship. That's illegal. Unless New Game Plus opens up. Considering there are collectibles, maybe there's New Game Plus. Extra interesting because it doesn't seem like there's anything about the story at all. <laughs> there was no story in there. <laughs> It's kind of funny because it only showed, like, the sanctuary fight and then the pirate ship. It showed nothing else, which is kind of amusing to me. But, yes, we are now going to be continuing our Spyro, Legend of Spyro, the Eternal Night. And we're going to see how things go. Because last time, like, after having a bit of time to digest the first, I, I don't know, like, 60%-ish, I would think, of the game that I played, maybe more 50, depending if this game has more, like, oh, you got all four breath powers, here's a few more levels compared to, like, a new beginning. I still think that the boss battles are definitely lesser compared to A New Beginning because all of the boss fights have been reused except for the parrot guy. Sure, they changed things around a bit-ish. Well, really the only thing they changed uh, was Arboric, who was more of a puzzle boss than a normal compared to his rock cousin in the floating islands. Then... They just reused the train, they reused the Draugr King, and then there was Pirate Guy. And Pirate Guy was just kinda... Very meh. <laughs> but, like I said, Pirate Guy was still a better boss fight than both of Red's boss fights from A Hero's Tale. Because even though they were wonky and weird, I could still have agency and do damage to the boss before the patterns demanded, which, hey, player agency is always nice. But, there is just a little bit of weirdness with the story because it doesn't feel like it used a new beginning as a springboard as much as it could have. Like, I feel Cinder could have been more of a focal point as opposed to only appearing twice so far and we're over halfway in, I presume. Which is kind of disappointing. <laughs> then again, kind of accurate to how she was in the first game too, but... I don't know, I just felt like... We saved Cinder in the first game, that she would have more of a presence here. But we'll have to see, maybe just the amount of Cinder explodes in the final third or something. But, otherwise, I think the gameplay is still fairly nice. Enemies are very aggressive in this game. As I was told by Twitch chat during a new beginning, this is the... <laughs> they jokingly called the Dark Souls of Legend of Spyro. But, 
I do like the changes to the breaths, even if I think Earth Flail is a little meh. But I've been having fun. Just with a few moments. The platforming can sometimes be weird. Them eating my double jump. Aggravating sometimes. But still, a very nice fun time just with some quibble, quibbles. Let's see what else is in store for us. After Spyro passed out while flying and apparently landing on a whale. And we were about to learn, well, relearn, our electricity breath from the Chronicler. As a lot of games using third-person camera, platforming is generally not as its prime. Eh, I think, like, it can work. It's just that, uh, like, uh, it feels like they didn't have, like, they tried to do basic platforming, but they made it just a wee bit too much. And again, it, it, would, it also doesn't help that the double jump gets eaten a lot. Can you hear me? Is the Chronicle are actually going to turn out to be evil? Oh, I do too. A flash of lightning is born of the sky and its tempers are undrastic. You must learn to control your own emotions if you are to tame the free spirit of electricity. I just had a thought. Just randomly to me. I'll, I'll do it after we <laughs> relearn electricity. Surrender to its erratic nature. But I thought you said I need to control my emotions rather than let the erratic nature take over me. I will say, though, after playing through these two games, the Legend of Spyro design has definitely grown on me. It's a bit weird compared to previous Spyro designs, but I still think it's neat. Trust your instincts. You have reawakened the electricity element within Spyro. Follow. Yeah, basically the same thing. But I just realized something. Because this game is called The Eternal Night. The Chronicler said that, like, on the day of the Eternal Night, the eclipse caused by the two lunar moons, diddly dee. It's uh, awakening the, uh, like, uh, or urging the dark souls, the, like, uh, people with darkness in them to go to Mountain Malifor. And uh, on the night, well, it's also called, like, the, the Well of Souls, I think it is. And on that, the eternal night, for a brief time, the vacant evil souls will rise again. And I, that has to come to play. At some point, e even though technically didn't we fight evil souls before? I mean, we fought pirate ghosts and the Draugr, so I feel like that should count. But, but yeah, obviously that the evil souls are probably going to have to come into play uh, in some level. I think I... Just enough! Haha! <laughs> Pro skater power! And let's see, ooh, uh, is it just gonna be, like, the electric version? Oh! Oh, ha, ha. oh that's kind of cool. Uh, interesting. It just fell to the ground. Huh. Interesting. Getting used to this? This is... Very interesting for an electricity power. Oh! That's how it works! It's a detonation! Oh! Okay! That's cool! That is cool. I, did, I was wondering why it was acting a bit weird. It's because it's a press again for detonation power. I overestimated how long it was going to be in there. Stayed turned around. Spyro's electric whirlwind, then moves Spyro around. 
All right. Kind of slippery, but kind of neat. I feel like that's a better get-off-me tool than the ice tail. But we'll have to see. <laughs> Spyro Beyblade! Kinda, yeah. I do, I do like that they went out of their way to make the breaths wholly different and unique for this game. Rather than just reusing them from the previous game. I do appreciate that. It just it does make it a little bit difficult to get used to. Especially because they do become a bit like niche. Oh. Alright. I wonder if this will ever actually come up in the levels. Because that's a cool puzzle thing. Very cool, very cool. Again, I need to remember to use my time slowdown powers more. Alright, time to learn our fury. I do think that they definitely streamlined the tutorial. Which I do appreciate. I do like that it's just like... Very quick. Basically all of electricity is a... Get off me to a degree. Just instant bomb! Just add electricity. And it seems to have a good radius, so I wonder how good it'll be when upgraded. Alright, just let him respawn, and now... Electric Fury! Having a big build-up. There's basically a super explosion. Very cool. I just need to actually make use of it more. Yeah, I don't know what to think of the Chronicler. He's not wholly, like, helpful. He just seems like, here, do this, awaken, go. Completed your test. What do I do next? How can I find you? Are you there? Great. Now the voice inside my head is ignoring me. <laughs> Maybe I'll just take a peek. Are we gonna see something evil? It is a like a gaze vision pool. Oh, that's not nice at all. So the traitor returns. I mean, is she really a traitor? <laughs> and what is this? Yeesh. Long have we waited. Long have we suffered. But soon, our master will return. And his coming shall bring forth a new age of power. Because they never did explain what all that was like in the first game. Like we destroyed the, the portal kind of, sort of. A voice came from it. The sea. But nice to, hey, m more Cinder. That's always nice. Kind of disappointed that she went from big bad to kind of damsel. Goodbye, crazy little turtle monster. Goodbye, goodbye. Thanks for everything. How'd you move Spyro off of it, Sparks? What happened? Well, let's see. Are you actually super strong? I mean... Have we? Has Spyro really led us all over the place? 
We went to a forest, got kidnapped, oh, fell, and now we're here. We haven't really... Spiral hasn't led us anywhere. So... From the YouTube Wait. chat, hello, hello, hello. Oh, oh. oh hey, it looks kind of like the sanctuary to a degree. Ish. Has that kind of vague aesthetic to it. Hello, tree. Just, well, brute tree thing. I guess. And... This place feels very unearthly. How did the turtle bring us here? Was that turtle monster in on it? What did it want from us? Also, I'm sinking through the floor. The sand is eating me. Hmm. Well, I guess we'll go along. Oh, it's been a bit since we've seen the, the teeter-totter. Amazing how many of these pillars just fall precisely into a good... Diddly do you just have to get good at the platforming? I keep falling off. Darn it. <laughs> the geometry ate my double jump that time. Because I have to get it up. And then run along enough to get to here. Or maybe they wanted me to automatically jump to this. I don't know. It's hard to tell sometimes. Oh. Huh. Is this supposed to be like... Okay, that's a door. That is a door. So this is a, this is a tower that fell. Huh. Ah, huh. that is a little worrying. And that there is the, uh, the statue dudes that we've been fighting in the dreams. And it's playing the title screen music. Are we actually gonna run into the Chronicler? I guess I'll upgrade the electricity since we have the uh, stuff to do it. I keep forgetting that there's fall damage. Again, I do like that there's little footsteps behind Spyro. Oh, hey, a quill. Why is there just a collectible out in the open? Is this like an optional fight encounter? Explosion! Explosion! Hmm, doesn't do a lot of damage, but it, it is a good get off me tool. But basic combo seems to be good against these guys more than... So yeah, a good get off me tool if I'm getting chased, but I wonder how good it'll be against like more apes. All right, there's searching light, evil statues of doom. I wonder what happened to you guys to get you stuck in the the ice below. And there's another collectible just right out there. Hmm. <laughs> okay, I have no idea why they had to add physics. Just to throw the player off, I guess. <laughs> I refuse to play your games, Seesaw. I am the Winrar today. But this place is very interesting. It has a very nice aesthetic. Hmm, there's another seesaw up there. Like, obviously, I need to 
come in here to maybe... Huh. Hmm, because that seems like the place it wants me to go. But that exists. Hmm. Again, the <laughs> fall damage. Either I never really experienced it in a new beginning, or I just forgot. Or maybe it wasn't there. But yeah. <laughs> this is much nicer platforming, I gotta say. Maybe if I stand on this one, it'll activate something. Nope. Because there is a seesaw. Which does imply I could be able to do it. But isn't there a little Easter egg here by the lake and the ice? If you mean like the, uh... The statue guys. I already saw them. Kind of reminds me of, uh... What was his name? Uh... The fate of uh, Ares from the God of War games. His body's like thrown into the ice. You see later in a game. Huh. I do kind of miss having a first person mode because, on the one hand, it looks like I should be able to get up to that platform above the pillar, but maybe it could be a loop around spot. Maybe. And that could be teasing me. There doesn't seem to be a way to get to it from here. No way to glide to it from someplace else. So I'm just going to leave it be. I just wanted to make sure I wasn't uh, losing any options. We'll use time stop to run on by. Because I remember seeing you're able to... Oh, crash in the eyes. Hmm. I didn't see Crash in there. Hmm, maybe my eyes are bad, or maybe you need to do certain things. It could be that maybe you need to stand on certain, like, statue pedestals to, like, activate the, the Easter egg, maybe? Then maybe Crash appears, potentially. That's just my theory. A mid-playthrough theory. Okay. I wonder if these dark statues mean anything. Or if they're just actual statues. Maybe they're actual statues. Not here to be evil. Huh. Alright, no idea what to do with you without my ice breath. Jerk man. Ah, I'm supposed to get to here from there, uh huh. Gotcha. It's just I never know what's a secret and what's not a secret. No idea if slowing down is what's helping me hit him. I thought that I wouldn't be able to hit, like, a fire guy. You'd think that a fire guy would just, like, not be able to be hit because he's on fire, but what do I know? <laughs> I overthought things. Maybe I should have also fought fire with fire. That would also potentially be a thing. Um, Laser beam of death just out of nowhere. Interesting. Again, really liking the vibes. And do you awaken after I do that? Because you are obviously the 
will come to life and bash me type of statue and not the is a statue statue. Oh, hey, another uh, fire element uh, placed over statue guy model. Oh, hey, you're alive now. Gotta <laughs> do my cycling of air combos, throw a statue at a fire guy. And cause why not? Ah, fighting fire fire is actually kind of viable. Again, it could just be my mind, but I just never thought that like normal fire would be able to do much against him. I should probably upgrade my fire more than anything. Use the basic fire. I wonder if, like, uh, <laughs> the ice breath will would do anything against this weird, murky water of doom. All right. Hello, door. This definitely feels like a more ornate dragon sanctuary, which... Ah, this is going to be a battle arena, huh? Door closes behind you, big open place. Sacred threshold, hallowed ground. Have risen full, lock is found. Yeah? Prove your worth with quick desire. Ice and earth, electric fire. So. What the? Now I'm hearing voices. We all are, what? Sparks. How would I know? It's puzzle. We have to I'm light up the pedestals? Nope, nope. have missed something. Come on, let's look around. <laughs> I already see it. Each pedestal is color-coded. So either we have to do, like, a battle for each... <laughs> what the fuck? No, but nightmare demons! <laughs> and they're alarm thingies, too. Just out of nowhere, each like. Oh, did it explodes! So. Either I'm supposed to like destroy these things near here and the color of their orb is what needs to be placed, which kind of annoying if that is true. I'm closer cuz I'm not cuz like that's the one problem with this like uh, since they fall into orbs I kind of wonder okay that is what I'm supposed to do that is what I'm supposed to do but not nearly as complicated it's just that I wasn't sure because if they explode was the thing and I didn't know exactly what they one, at least they seem to stay dead if I put the orb in the proper place. Very annoying that they explode so quickly, though. Like, hello, game. <laughs> they are taunting me from very far away and uh, do decent damage. Come on, fight me over here, assholes. Would be nice if they had, like, a permanent health generator. Cause it, yeah, come on, get closer, you jerks. Yeah, come on. I hate that their attack is also a movement thing, too. Oh, well, come on, you come to me. Come on. Then again. Yeah, there we go, maybe. 
interesting, but the orbs shouldn't explode. Once again, would be nice if there was a health thing. Ah, this is green. Gotcha. Uh, then I have to hit this. At least this is permanent, because, <laughs> like, this is very important. The electricity is still scary. I guess I haven't hit this enough by its qualifications. There we go. When you compare this to the cons uh, to the concept art of this level, it gives a really good eerie environment. Hmm. Because so far it seems to be nailing kind of mystical, but decrepit. That's a fucking book. All right. I thought I was gonna have to light these fires. Is there going to be a boss fight with a book? So it looks like there's going to be a, a test with each area. Huh. Okie dokie. This definitely re also resembles the, like, Chronicler's Place of Doom. Guess we're gonna go down the fire trial. And see, ah, oh, I do have to kill more of these things. Again, I just wish that the orbs didn't explode. The orbs exploding is what annoys me. Come on, come closer. Yeah, because again, their attack is movement. Huh, apparently I can combo the orb into place, which is nice. Wait, if I had to change one thing of this segment is get rid of the exploding orbs. That just overcomplicates it. And kind of, I don't know, punishes the player for just randomly. Oh, I have to use fire in here, too. Kind of like that. I tried to change to ice when I saw the lava golem. Oh, rude. Also very rude that he can just backhand me out of the air. Luckily, just respawn me right here. Also annoying that they can just, like, <laughs> get me out of my combo with that, apparently. So I'm going to knock you into this puddle. Well, apparently they thought of that. Or did they? He's, like, on the cusp. Yeah, man. Come on, game, you told me to do that to blocking enemies. Why does it not work now? That was also a very weird thing, because they give enemies the option to block, but then they tell you, hey. <laughs> do this to blocking enemies, but it's really... Do well, that's very rude. Game, I'm trying to play game. <laughs> Would be... Nice if you would stop. 
knocking me out of my combos because you just want to. I wonder if I'll kill him. Booyah! So far, interesting. Just little bits of the... I wonder if I can air combo just the fire. Appar <laughs> apparently no. How the fire can block? No idea. Personally, I find that a little mean. You throw a blocking enemy at me that has hardly any animation to tell that, I, that he's blocking. Oh, up, green. Definitely need to get that. Definitely do not want to fall down there. Or maybe I need to fall down there. Yeah, because it's a... Up, down, up, down, elevator. It seems like I need to begin there to begin the thing. And then from there, I should be able to try and get to the green. Very rude. Because <laughs> it didn't seem like the, the book I'm was sure coming back up. Time. Why have a book elevator if it's not going to a book elevator? Do I need to stand on the book elevator that you refused to send my way to activate? Oh, I need to light. Okay, gotcha. Interesting mechanic. Maybe I missed the cues on to activate it, which would be on my fault. Still weird that the book elevator didn't come back. I will hold to that eternally. Yes, 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 I hear you smashing about. Can I throw you into your buddy to do extra damage? I have to wait for you to get out of your blocking phase. So I can finish comboing you to death. And now I get to deal with your friend. Gakua. Are you perhaps related to Nickelodeon Gak? I've never even, I don't even know exactly what Nickelodeon Gak is. I just remember hearing about it. Goodbye. Yes, yes, Mr. Fireman exists. <laughs> and sending more after me. Well, excuse me, I am going after... Green. Much easier to get... ...than... ...many, many others. I've yet faced. Why are you called the Frigid when you're on fire? I, game, I was in the middle of beginning the air combo, and it's just like, and now he's gonna hit you. Very rude. Now we'll wait for him to, oh, he's just gonna charge after me. Use my breath to stun, get into air combo mode. Send him rocketing into his ally. Probably back up and wait for him to get out of their blocking phases. Which I still think is a little rude. But I am getting the hang of these guys' patterns. And we're fighting Gakua again. Dang it. And now we will air combo you to death. There we go. 
Nice of them to put a health dealy all the way here. What are you? No, seriously, what are you? Am I supposed to... Hmm. Because obviously you're a thing. Like, maybe a secret? Because obviously, like, you feel like you're a mini pedestal for the balls. Like, I don't know. Hmm. Then there's, like, a little place up here. I don't know. This seems like- it, this feels like a thing. Like it should be a thing. But I don't know. <laughs> From the YouTube chat, hello Neon, hello, hello. Alright, that's it. That was a thing. And it did a thing somewhere. And I don't know what it is, maybe it's up forward. And if we didn't do that, we would have to come back. Because, <laughs> like, obviously they wouldn't just make a random thing out of nowhere. Is this, like, a bonus level? Or what? Alright. Already very annoyed. I sure do love when uh, dodging is meaningless. Also a little annoying that they put, like, the breath power thing here, but... Not, like, anything actually useful. What's with this game and just not giving the player, like, health? It's also weird that it's like, kind of, uh... Like, why not give the player health so they can learn the pattern a bit more? And it respawned it, too. Slow down to swoop around. And get away. This is definitely not how they intended this boss fight to go, but hey. Uh, we'll run with it. Dodge around. Close. Dodge around. Definitely not intended. Also, they reused that boss fight again. Slightly disappointing, but oh well. Will this take me back to the normal place? Because there was a fire door. Hmm. That makes me wonder. Bits and bits and bits. 
I wonder if going through this will heal me. But it also probably means that we're going to have to go through the Draugr fight, uh, like, th three more times. Why do they- why, why even have a platform here? Well, that's fun. Also interesting that these guys are electricity. Also very interesting. I wonder why sometimes my air combo does get them in the air, and other times it doesn't. The blocking mechanic just feels unnecessary at this point. It's like, no, don't defeat the enemy too quickly. I don't know. It just feels weird. Unnecessary. Especially because they already have the perfect, oh hey, uh, you're beating this guy too quickly, like mode, with the, like, uh, the second health bar thing that some enemies have, like the spiders, and the, oh, you. Took, took you, <laughs> took you a moment to actually load in your... Your health bar. I was hitting you for a while. And we'll go load up on breath power a bit. Yeah, I'm gonna, I guess I'm gonna have to go down here. Oh yeah, I forgot. Fall damage. Very hard to see down here. I assume that's already activated as a crystal thing. I probably sent it off the cliff. Darn. I'll have to respawn. Oh, no, it survived! Aha! Good. I shall snuck you away from the ledge. So that, like, I can get resources from you. Alright. Very, very far reaching headbutt attack. Sure. And I guess you didn't notice one of the crystal enemies charging you and suiciding? <laughs> no, I did not. I thought they just got, like, lightly hit by my, like, uh, combo and went boom. Hmm. I also saw a crystal down here, which, now that there are no more enemies, I guess I can try and shoot some power at, because why not? Ah, so it was a thing I needed. God, I'm glad they didn't expect me to put one in that one. I don't think it'd be possible. But you never know, some designers are crazy. And I see you, Quill, over there. Oh, 
And I see you down there, Flaming Mask. Well, less Flaming Mask, more health. I, I, I still wish that I could actually fly mid-fall like something. What do you mean there was no save point between all that, you fuck-ass game? Seriously, that's dumb. Also hate when they like, ooh, no combo for you. Why? Some... But that's dumb. That is unbelievably dumb, and fuck you. Hey, fuck off. <laughs> no, no hitting me when you're glowing bright and I can't see your animations. Yeah, that is insanely dumb. You have multiple encounters, and you're like, ah, no. After I light up the three things, you should be just instantly go. Why you be weird, game? Come on, activate. It does bother me that sometimes my air combo... Like, I don't know. It, it, it seems like they weirded out the air combo depending on, like, how you initiate it. Come on. you We all know I'm hitting it with ice. Just realized I could have probably used the, uh... the Fury Power against the Draugr boss. Yeah, either my gr like, the gamma setting is wrong or something, but this is very frickin' bright. Ah, we'll come back and activate that normally later. Again, I hate that these guys attack so fast. You big golems. Come on, game. Let me play. Oh, but you just hit this guy. Yeah, let me hit him again. Smack them both. At least the collectibles seem to stay collected. So, like, I won't have to go get the quill again. still annoying that the orbs self-destruct. I can understand to some degree because they don't want them to get stuck in, like, an impossible place. But I feel like they could still be a little bit more generous with the timer. Or, like, maybe have the player be able to summon them, like, eh, <laughs> it got stuck. Self-destruct for me. And activate. I just need to be careful and land on the book. I almost didn't land on the goddamn book. There we go. Now we just have to wait to go back up. Yeah, the water is way too bright <laughs> for me. It's also, like, the same color as the ice you create for platforms. And luckily, this is infinite, which I do appreciate. Let's see. At least I'm doing decent on the health masks, which is nice. Less to worry about there. Health is more important to me than... Delete. Hmm. I wonder, can I... I feel like you should be able to... 
like, oh, because I'm probably supposed to. There we go. I've discovered what it is I'm supposed to do. I'm supposed to use my time powers because they go very fast. Why do you get to spin around like a bastard? Fuck you. Very rude of you. I'm mid-comboing you, and you dared to go actually. I block that now. So I just need to not get too cocky. Ah, uh, nope. It was too far away for that. And then, like, when he's mid swing. It's a bit more lenient. Also, that's not an ice club that you're creating with your breath. That's just a normal club. Like, the actual ice dragger boss from the first game did have an ice axe and stuff. You do not, my dear man, and you are just in the thick of it. How dare you hit me anyway. Nah, too far away. And schmeck. Now that I know how to exploit you, who knows, maybe that's actually what they want you to do. Doesn't feel like it. Yeah, technically the third executioner dead, even though it's like, these aren't the, like, I don't know. Who was that guy that the pirates had? Where did they get him? And now we have to suffer through the, uh, the thing that I haven't upgraded at all. Yeah, I'm gonna upgrade my flame, because I want it to be nice. It also feels like they're a little bit more stingy with level up stuff. Because it feels like if you played your cards right, you would be able to fully level up your breath. Alright, so I need to... Very specifically. But yeah, like, in the first game... You could really easily... Fully upgrade a breath, like, the level you got it. Maybe not the, like, projectile, but still. I hate that your headbutt goes so far. Come on, stop blocking now so I can kill you to death. Ah, uh, you block again, you jerk. How dare. Blocking is illegal here in wherever the hell we are. We were kidnapped by flying pirates, so who knows. Yeah. <laughs> I'm like a frog, yeah. Now give me health. 
Yeah, sometimes these guys are very slow, other times they're just disturbingly fast. And then I go away, because you're in yeah. block mode, where you automatically know if I'm going to hit you. With big enemies, I need to play it just a little bit safe. With smaller enemies, uh, I have no idea. They just swarm. Two buttons, huh? Is it because... Obviously not. Interesting that they're starting to use these beyond just the activate final portion. Darn you. Interesting, but at the same time kind of weird. Like, I feel like these are things should have been there, like, uh, far earlier. To be like, ah, you are the purple dragon. You have the ability to control time-ish. So therefore, there are these things that only you can do. Then again, I guess this is supposed to be like the Chronicler's place, so... Coming in this deep, only something as uh, amazing as a purple dragon would be able to get through. Makes me wonder if only purple dragons can learn all the breath elements. Or maybe everybody else is just like, I'm going to specialize in this and nothing more. Like a little weirdo. Glancing around to make sure there isn't like anything secret. There's just a whole goddamn army. Go flying. And it looks like we're gonna be fighting a lot of the crystal guys. Go flying. And I do see a quill in the background that we're gonna go try and grab. More flying for you. At least they're not like super duper coming after me. So I can kind of just batter them about, whittle them down. I'm going to send your friend's dead body at you. And you're blocking. So in a way, you killed your friend. Because you blocked his body. How could you? Go flying! I know they're probably expecting me to use my breath power a bit more, but yeah, I don't want to deal. F it's not very damaging. So I don't know. At least the comboing works a treat. And now they're down to one. Hmm. Oh. That was easier than I thought. <laughs> then again, I don't think I was supposed to do it that way. <laughs> There's a shield guy right here. And a branch. Yeah, I don't think I was supposed to do it that way. I think I was supposed to jump from the shield onto the branches of the circular tree and then go to the, the <laughs> go to it. But why do that when I can just uh, not? Ah, the parkouring demons. They're back again. I do kind of enjoy that these guys, like, sound like alarms.
Hmm. Now the problem is luring this guy to his new home. Because sometimes, well, Nupia, he seems very, very, <laughs> very much wants to go to his new home. It's just sometimes enemies do like following, other times they don't. Yeah, get out of the geometry. They smack you around a little bit. <laughs> you just go flying. <laughs> if this game was moddable, I would replace those green crystals with Shrek. Uh, green. We know a, a green or organic this time. Ah, uh, you can never escape Shrek. I wonder what this is. Hmm, what? Oh, yeah. Why would you hide the health? You jerks. But I wonder what this is. I wonder what this is. Hmm. Maybe not all that important. Oh. Well, that's not good. Maybe I'll make it anyway. I made it anyway! Fuck you, world! I am a god! Again, interesting that they're putting gems hidden behind places. Huh. This is just already activated. I guess they grew bored of that mechanic and they're like, well, let's actually make it a part of the level and not for that thing. Even the chorus is on your side. Alright, we know what to do here. Uh, dang it. Alright, we definitely need to run away because we didn't do... Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> fear me. You fear the green tongue. Huh, even though he didn't attack, he still went uh, hit stun attack. The armor at least kind of looks nice. Kind of basic as armor go, but a pleasant look. This guy is very hit stunnable. Get my time powers back and then dodge. <laughs> Do one combo, then flee. Flee again! <laughs> again, he breathes to life an iron club. How do you do that, magic man? I like your words, magic man. And for some reason that destroys his shield, that he breathes to life as well. What kind of magical golem are you? Whoop. Whoop. Again, I have no idea if this is the intended way to, like, smack up the the spirits, but hey, it's working. It's kind of what I did to the, uh, the pirate guy. Who needs to actually fight the bosses when you can just kind of tweak out their, <laughs> their AI a little bit with time stopping? It's not time stopping, but you know what I mean. Time power! Spyro is Doctor Who. How come the Doctor never, like... <laughs> okay, just super, super punch him with the, the Earth tongue. Swoop, 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 swoop. And goodbye. Goodbye to you and your ponytail.
Oddly, I am enjoying the simplicity of these bosses. I vastly prefer these guys compared to the train ripoff or the pirate guy. It is just nice. But funnily enough, I still think that the absolute rehash that was Arboric is probably still the best, like, boss. Because at the very least, that guy was uh, interesting. Because even though it just reused the animations in totality, it had an, an interesting fight that I eventually picked up on, even if I think it could have been uh, <laughs> telegraphed a bit better. Remember, as you're going through all these trials and tribulations, to stay hydrated. Ma. Oh, I fell to the water. Darn you. I meant to do an air combo, and then I fell in. Don't ask me why I went to do an air combo. I just did. You're not immortal, Sparks. You can't tell me what to do. Oh, that's... That's not very nice at all. Alright. Gotcha. Interesting. I spin! Get smacked, idiot. Oh, wait, I think I see uh, a quill back there. We'll definitely have to go back to try and get it. They just really like hiding secrets in these areas. Oh, he fell in. Goodbye. I just realized the quill sound effect is the same as the boats. Alright, that pops up really quick and it goes down really quick. Can't reach. Gotcha. It ain't my double jump again, goddammit. I think it ain't my normal jump, too. How dare you? How far back are you putting me? Alright, you just put me here. Good. Huh. Get comboed. Even if I'm not skilled enough to actually profit off that combo. Hmm. Part of me is wondering if I can even make that jump. Oh, that's not good at all. I overthink if I can make jumps or not a lot. Hello, demons. Oh, can I... Did I miss a secret because of the... <laughs> the weirdness? Oh, uh, enemy just died. Okay. Or was that also part of a, you were meant to do it this way, but I did it anyway? I mean, I guess, okay. <laughs> Achievement unlocked, you made the Earth Spirit rage quit with the po by using time control. Eh, no more than the other guys. It, it would be funny if their health just instantly dropped to zero at one point. Oh, hey, maybe this is the... Darn it. How dare you survive. But we'll definitely gaze into the ice. See if there's any secrets. Hey, that's not nice. How dare you be able to attack me after guarding. But after I damage you, you guard a lot. That's illegal. If you commit to an attack, you should not be able to do jack. 
somehow I kind of got air combo with that. Go flying. Ball over your allies. Get slammed, idiot. But yeah, so far this is much better than the pirate ship. I still like that uh, Moliere returned for the pirate ship, but it's still, the pirate ship is too much. Ah, great, there's five million of them. Getting bullied. Quit whoop whooping at me. I see books. I need to remember that. Now come down and die. And get into place. How dare you. Why are you called Honeybeard? You make no sense. Yeah, come over here. Come over here. How dare you, honeybeard. That is not very honey about you. <laughs> this is so not cash money. Into place you go. As I just inspect every corner just in case. Ah, the books come down. Good to know. Hmm, doesn't look like there is a... Maybe, maybe he's here. No, it's a shield. Interesting. Oh, maybe there is a Crash Bandicoot in one of these. Hidden away from the world. Alright, there's a button. Just gonna make sure there aren't any... Ah, two button things. I'm gonna look around in case there's any hidden things. Doesn't look like it. Hidden health thing, though. Darn it. Three? Three of them! Darn it. Alright, we got one. Dang it. Ran out of my time stop juice. It's still a cool thing. It's a very cool power that they gave Spyro. How dare you get stuck on geometry and there avoid my trap, you monster. And there's just like one guy here, one statue. Doesn't seem like I can move him. And get smacked. Still overall interesting, just a little weird that they're throwing that this late into the game. But on we go to presumably the final spirit, unless I have to fight Captain Planet after this. Haha, <laughs> we can't do that. We don't have the power of heart. Whoop-a-doo, doo 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 
Oh, that's mean. He just walked into me. So that seems to be the goal to, like, at least for this guy, to use breath powers while your time regenerates. Ah, you fool. I was now to damage you. I already damaged you. Why do I need to damage you after I damage you? Aha, uh -huh, you utter tool. Why don't you go find a parrot to be your brain? Again, I have no idea if I'm doing this, like, properly. If this is, like, the expected way to do it. Hey, I actually used your element to beat you. Feel honored. You're like the only one. I damaged the others with their power a little bit, but you're the only one that I actively used it in my combos. For some reason, it just entered my mind. This place is kind of Final Bastion, like, feeling from Kingdom Hearts. Not totally. But, like, the kind of choir music. Well, the final thing is opened. What's gonna lead where? Where even are we? I think we found it. Hello? Is anyone there? No, I'm not here. Could we, you know, not wake it up? Yeah. <laughs> Everything we've met so far has tried to kill us. Expose your heart to summon ghosts. That's not good at all. That doesn't sound good. What you yeah, that doesn't sound good at all. I knew it. This place wants us dead. We should have turned back while we And also Sparks does have a point. Everything has tried to kill us. Yeah? Go ahead. Expose your heart and see what happens. Like Dragon Heart, you'll be betrayed by a human. At least I think that's the plot of the second movie. You can't leave me behind in the wacky moon temple with all the whispering walls and the crawly thingies. Why don't you expose your heart? Sparks, you become the hero of this game. But yeah, I'm not sure if I trust this wholly. Face what you fear most. What do we fear most? Do we f fear failing Cinder? Or do we just fear Cinder, okay? We're literally gonna fight Cinder again! This is game is nothing but rehashed boss battles. Oh, dang it hit me. I should have jumped. Well, then again, it's just called the Elemental Dragon. Ow, oh, that's Reach. Oh, okay. Get you. I got you. Very rude to hit me like that. I run away. Okay, I get you. I get you. But I need to heal up. That was close. I do like that we kind of have to pay attention. But man, you are just very fast! Oh, you're electric now. Okay, now you're blue now. But I wonder what it is that we fear the most. Okay, I, f I presume that to be electricity. A 
I don't even really need my slowdown power to fight you. Because air combos is nice. I don't think they really changed Cinder's uh, battle animations to account for the changed uh, combat. It's very similar, but slightly different. I miss my shotgun. <laughs> my earth power shotgun blast attacks. Yes, attack me by shaking your booty. Oh, mystical elemental dragon. I hope you don't turn into the element of whatever the hell it was I did at the end of the first game. That would be terrifying. And all of those are broken. Ah. And then we're just here again. And Sparks has nothing to say. <laughs> Sparks, what do you fear to fight against somebody having the same power as he does? <laughs> He's, uh, he's afraid of another purple dragon. Ooh, what's this? A time thing. Time goop. It's a magic wishing ring. Don't we all wish? <laughs> Hello? Genie? You in there? Is it the chronicler? This is incredible. The entire history of the <laughs> You just know that by looking at the books? Like it's all here. Then again, it, I bet you don't even... Well, most of it. <laughs> Have you even seen a book in your entire life, Spyro? Oh, to me! The records in this Ooh. date back to the beginning of time. Your wings look ragged, man. The Chronicle. Also, you're wearing clothes. Spyro, it is I. And I've been waiting for you. Well, at least I don't think you're a villain anymore. We keep you waiting too long. We got a little held up back there with the uh, well, you know, riddles of doom. It was a necessary evil. I had to be sure, Spyro. Be sure of what? I haven't had any visitors in my solitude. So you literally... <laughs> you haven't had visitors since the last purple dragon. Good. Try getting rid of the psychedelic dragon outside. You've been here for that long? How old can dragons be? I have my book. <laughs> I've read them all a thousand times. And wait. And listen for things to come. And then add them to the books of time. Huh. I guess that's why you're called the Chronicler. Many pages are still left incomplete. I am? Can I see? No, you may not. Of course you can. Oh, I can? <laughs> this one is yours. Look. He just has tele tele telepathic powers. Telekinetic. Is this... Seen this, hideous creature. Th this is why it's, why like, written, like, it's art for the cutscenes. Because they're the books. When Ignitus rescued your Eddie. And... When they took Cinder. Yes. That was most unfortunate. Oh, and look. Oh, hey, here Sparks. Is <laughs> hey, hey, hey. And Nobody Dragonfly needs... Mommy Milkers Wait, in there. Can these books tell the future? In parts, though. Just glimpses of the future, really. Then I want to know what will happen to Cinder. Spyro, you don't know. Please. I must know. <sighs> is this oh, going to lead to uh, bad uh, things? Is she going to die and we're going to avert her fate? understand when she was taken by Gore, she was poisoned and corrupted, made to do the Dark Master's bidding. Yeesh. Her entire life has been spent in shadow. She knows no other way. And when the Dark Master returns, she will concede. No one can resist the temptation. Yeesh. Not even the strongest among us. I don't believe that. Oh no, among us. Spyro, let me tell you another story. Ooh, ooh, ooh. Can I pick the story this time? No, you may not. There was once a dragon, long ago, whose raw power was far greater than anyone had ever seen or could imagine. At first, he mastered fire, which was odd because he was not a fire dragon. <laughs> Is the enemy actually going to be an evil purple dragon? And other abilities none thought possible. <laughs> Is this story something? It was a purple dragon. Yeah, I didn't even know. The first purple dragon. The first? In the beginning, he was encouraged, and secrets of elemental mastery were passed on to him willingly by the elders. Ha! Huh. But his power was limitless. It knew no boundary. 
consumed everything. When he would not stop, he was cast into exile. And from his new fortress within the mountain, he built an army, not of dragons, but of apes. Apes. And taught them to artificially harness the power of the gems. Huh. You're talking about the Dark Master. Yes. And in his dark seclusion, the sheer weight of his malice cracked the very foundation of the mountain, splitting the earth, creating a pit of despair. Oh, that's Mountain Malifor, the Well of Souls. The Well of Souls. Created by the very beast who now seeks to escape. So that means he died, right? Because if he's in the Well of Souls, he is a soul. But you said that the Eclipse would only allow the spirits to escape for a short while. Yes, but if there was ever a spirit powerful enough... Then how do we stop it? There is no stopping it. It has been written. Well, how do we then stop it after it has been written? I don't understand. To ride out this storm where you'll be safe. Live to fight another day. <laughs> we have to wow, go save Cinder. That's pretty good. And what about the other guardians? Yeah. What about their safety? I fear the worst for the others. And Cinder? Am I supposed to sit here and do nothing while she joins them? Uh, let me field this one. Yes! No. You keep talking about choosing a path. He also said about, like, about following a single path never given, given to us. I have to try. I'm going, and you can't stop me. Then I won't. Young dragon, I've waited far too long to watch you leave here stricken with grief and doubt. You'll need a clear mind and a hmm. pure heart if you are to withstand the evil that consumes that place. I so you'll... know this is not the path you would choose for me. Hmm. But I have to walk my own path. And do what I know is right. So be it, Spock. I will show you the way. But you must hurry. The dark out of the Even though this guy like started off kind of creepy and not like <laughs> not very forward. just so I know why I died. I do like that he's like, well, if it is your choice. Army of evil creatures that will want to kill us, so we can try to rescue another evil creature that has already tried to kill us. I'm pumped. Let's let's do this. Even though slightly sarcastic, he's, I do like that he's kind of like, fine, let, let's go do it. Onward to our death. <laughs> okay, floating time crystal. Not time crystal, like a time hourglass. He just created a hole. Again, I like these little transitionary art pieces. They're just nice. Is he actually going to lead us on to have a, a clear mind? Also, I just realized we got the electricity breath, and it didn't even have, like, its own level. The, the level of the electricity breath was just... And now it's time for the level of, uh, you have gotten all the, the, the powers. Spark, you don't need to come with me. I won't think less of you. Well, we came all this way. Might as well die together. No way. And miss the opportunity to live out my worst nightmares? Sarcastic, but <laughs> still there with you. I love when the Chronicler does everything to bring you here in order to protect you and wait until a certain amount of time. Then why do all of these things that could kill me a billion times? Well, I guess it could look at it like, um, look at it from the, uh, kind of Assassin's Creed perspective. Where the player's failings aren't canon. And only the, uh, like the player character's successes are canon. So, like, even though you can fail... Hmm. I wonder. Well, there do seem to be, like, platforms, but... Hmm. Well, that's how I see it. Sure, there are all these, like, challenges and stuff that can kill you. From an in-universe perspective, that never happens. The only thing to canonically happen is your victory. Unless you want to write, like, gritty, dark fan fiction of what if everything failed. Oh, and then they just fly away. Oh. 
Well, why put a spiky thing there? How dare. Are you gonna <laughs> come out to try and bamboozle me? Why hide away if you're just gonna jump away? Or are they the welcome committee? Huh, you can actually watch them leave! Wait. Well, that's just a rude place to put a quill. Well, 29 out of 40 so far. I must have missed more quills than I thought. Would have been funny if they put one in both places. Then there would be people that are like, oh, they would never put a quill in both places, and missed one, go back eventually, and be like, why did they put two quills in the same place but opposite? Hmm. I think I'll keep this for a get-off-me tool. <laughs> are we gonna have to fight Cinder again? Like, it would be mildly interesting to fight a dragon our size. Beyblade, bay, darn you. Didn't even let me kill a guy. I wanted to Beyblade. How dare you waste my resources. I really should use fire more. See if that'll... Give some do... Laser beam. Uh, I guess, uh, time shenanigans must take place. Mm. Never mind. Uh. Kind of, sort of, out. Uh. So I think that is kind of what you're supposed to do, but I did it improperly. Ready? Okay, we have to fight these guys again. Also, why are you hiding the place that you need to break out of? Oh, so I can... I think I did manage to kill one. Or <laughs> does killing one without gems gained just activate the cutscene? Yeah, it just activates the cutscene. How oh dare. Hmm. Oh, game, I just stepped into the thing. How dare. Ah! Interesting, but weird. A little bit tight on the execution. The music is kind of interesting as well, in a dark and ominous kind of way. Uh, this is a evil dragon statue, isn't it? What was that? Uh, the enemies running away. Hope they're not going to ambush me. Well, I mean, ambush me more than they already have. Oh, hey, look, it's the ambush I was talking about. Uh... Interesting. Into the air with you, so I can combo you to death. Please actually give me gems. After I kill you, I mean. Another Nimrod about to die. Uh. 
I hate getting hit by things that I almost don't even know what hit me. Ha, huh, didn't even mean to hit you. Oh, these guys can teleport. I wonder what happened to that one guy. Because I think they're teleporting. Fine, I'll kill your allies and then I'll come after you. Maybe I'm supposed to send electricity at you. Okay, I do like that, like, bouncing a guy away activates the... I do hate that these guys can just interrupt my air combo. No interrupting my air combos. That's illegal in 50 states. But I do like that Jim's gonna hang around. You thought you were safe, but you are not. And of course, the last one standing is a little guy. Never mind. Get out of here, spinning dog. You seem bigger than the other ones I've fought. Your death sounds are weird. Then again, I don't think there's really much of a normal death sound, huh? I guess down the hole you go. Oh, almost went down the hole. Oh, no, but he did go down the hole. He just had to stand up first. He was just like, if I'm going to go down the hole, <laughs> I'm going standing. I shall chase you down with fire. Which I really should use more because it seems to do decent damage and not cost much in terms of breath. Especially with these guys that teleport ar around a lot. No more teleporting. Instead you die. And I guess I killed enough of his minions who's just like, Yes, now you can come closer to my... <laughs> <laughs> My throne room. The pirates are weirder. The pirates are most definitely weirder. They weren't even led by an ape guy. They were led by parrots. It's like they were the failed incarnation of the apes. And the parrots are like, Hey, I think we can use these fools. And then they proceeded to. Okay, nothing behind the spiky tree. There is a door. <gasps> But, I, oh, that's because that's the closed door that was, uh, I think, the, in the same building of the... Uh, well, no, I think it might be a different thing. But I think it might be a closed door that we were on the other side of, and then we had to go down the hole. I don't know. Maybe. It, maybe I'm just making things up in my brain. Are you going to light the dynamite, or did you just make a, a, a wall of dynamite thinking that you're safe? Why even show us that? Oh, because hell is coming. Jesus. Ow.
I'm surrounded, but I'm not going to die today. I am the one who kills you. Quit trying to claw me <laughs> while you surround me, you mini minions. Die and give me gems. Die and give me gems. Become a health pot for me. Who needs strategy? I have flame breath. I am a dragon, not a fighter. Now die, great bard. Also, I think I just realized these guys are the... I think, well, they kind of resemble the assassins that attacked the sanctuary. How dare <laughs> you instantly spawn and instantly attack me. Most illegal activity. And we're almost there to fully level up my flame breath. Which is something I should have done before. Alright, we need to drop down. Gotcha. Just looking around to make sure there isn't any hidden things just yet. Also, I gotta say, the <laughs> I just realized that the majority of the snow is just a screen effect. It's not even really happening around us. It is just really dialed up as a thing on the screen. How is this logistically possible? Hello, Draugr! What the fuck? Oh, we'll cremate the dead. Cremate the dead. Okay. I think I jumped too early. Damn it. I'm dead. Here we go. Ah, uh, darn it. Not enough. Because it has a very specific pattern that we need to go through. Oh, hey. <laughs> uh, cremate the dead. Cremate the dead. Cremate the dead. Then cremate the dead. Then cremate the dead. All right. All right, we made uh, the first part. Aha, we did it. Oh, we can do it. I am always willing to give good faith collectibles a shot. Alright, we're going to have to wait for the full rotation of the platforming to go. I think I did it too early. Again. Darn it. I wish it was more like the other segments, because they have it programmed to be able to launch you back to your previous location. Oh, hey! Try shooting some magic out of your face. Well, that wouldn't have helped us here. Yeah, but we still got the... We still got the main thing. <laughs> Alright, uh... Have to find the proper... Okay, why add a lip if it's just gonna get in the way? Ah, crap. Have to get away, gotta get away. 
It's just like the spiders all over again. Come on, let me actually hit you. time for the first time <laughs> and if we have to run to you for the first time managed to beat you guys without dying huzzah so if these guys out seems a bit better to, like, get them out of their armor first, and then start spamming breath. Alright, we'll just come down here, because there's health. Haha. -ha. Well, actually... Dang it. Please stop trying to... Combo me. I'm the one who combos. Not you. Whew. That was close. Ah, uh, not this again. I have to play jump rope with the laser. Because there is a way down. Hmm. I'm interested. What's down here? Secrets or is this just a, oh, you fell? Nope, secrets. It feels like they put a lot more, like, secret, like, quill spots later on. Ah, uh, boss arena. Oh, hey, it's this again from the Draugr like land from the first game. <laughs> Just get rid of the main segment. That's rude. Once again, I hate when things like knock me out of my combo. When I have the breath available, these guys mean nothing. Also, thank you for comboing me. That's totally fair.
Also, these guys are very fast for dudes that like to combo me. Ah, shit. Okay, that is very annoying. Please stop. <laughs> that is very annoying that your mounts seem to act kind of like, uh... I would like out of the hell. Oh, that's bullshit! You should not be able to home in like that! And now I don't get my fury at the beginning. I think I have the strength to go on. Yeah, that's bullshit. Please skip cutscene. Bleg. But yeah, enemies should not be able to home nearly as much as games let them. It's just way too wonky. I mean, if I really wanted to, I bet I could probably run down and get the the green gems down there. Have to run away from the ghost. So I want to activate his twin. I hate that these guys stun so easily, or like stun me so easily. Is ever so slightly frustrating. Nope, no coming in with swinging monster man. No monster mashing for you. But I'm definitely saving my my next fury for when that big old lump of enemies comes for me because Jesus the big guy's only annoying because his mount decides to just screw the rules of fun and cut homes in on you Can I upgrade my breath? I think I can upgrade my breath. Burris Light's Fire Blast of Infernal Ruin. Hopefully this will help me. Again, blocking is just annoying in a beat-em-up. Like, her to her, here's an impenetrable... Like, it would be one thing if I could actually do what the game, like, tutorialized me on and actually air combo them out of their blocks, but that was only for a single enemy. It's just so weird. Such a weird design. You can <laughs> air launch... Oh, do it now, do it now, murder time! Get out of here, please. And of course, more of them show up. Game, please, fucking stop! What are you, quit comboing me to death! Game! That's bullshit! Alright, let's do it. That's so stupid. That they just spawn five billion enemies at the end, and then just refuse to actually let you play the game. Like, I get it. These guys can be air comboed, but they have way- there's way too much fucking going on, man. And it's such bullshit that they just spawn in while 50 billion other enemies still exist. To just fuck with you, I hate it. That is a terrible end to this arena battle. 
Just utterly terrible. Horrible design. Genuinely bad. Enemies should not be able to combo the player. At all. Never. Invincibility frames, please. It wasn't a deal in the last game. Because in the last game, enemies did not nearly be this aggressive. I wish I could air combo these guys. Again, I wish that there was like the enemies were less aggressive so that you could actually manage the fight better. But with the added on, just like, just like, just like them trying to up the uh, difficulty a little bit, it just doesn't feel good to face. Because it, it's starting to feel like I have to start cheesing the game rather than actually play it. Which is never a good feeling. Unless it's like, ooh hoo, I cheese the game under my own thing rather than the only way to play is to cheese. Quit blocking. You are terrible monster man. Again, it's still... Like, if the blocking actually functioned like the tutorial, like, worked, like, maybe. Because being able to knock enemies out of blocking would actually be a cool mechanic. But it's just like, that's not what they want you to do. Okay, I'm just gonna try and knock the big guys off if possible. Why do you spawn so many of them? Why do you do so much damage? Game! Jesus! No, that's wrong! That is horseshit! They should not home in that much! Pick a lane, you cunt! Die again? Like, genuinely, fuck off! That's so stupid! Quit spawning the annoying bastards, you fuck off game! Why does it do so much damage? Why do so much fucking damage? God, and the hitbox is just fucking... All your attempts to play the game. Again, this is entering into... There is a hyper-specific way to play this. And the developers were too brain-dead to get people outside of their, like, realm to come playtest their goddamn game. Quit it. You bastard. Stop spawning the mounted combat bastards if you're not going to actually balance the mounted combat bastards, you bullshit game. And, it's, like, we've never run into these guys before. Like, in the, like, the first game, yes, but not this game. So there's nothing, <laughs> we just have nothing to go on. It's so stupid, I hate it. Again, with how aggressive all the enemies are in this game, there's just no way to legitimately play the game how the developers intended. I hate it. It's just frustrating. Because it doesn't feel like you're, like, playing the game. It's like, it feels like you have to break it to get anywhere. It just isn't fun. And it would be one thing. <laughs> it's like, the, the mounted enemies just can't pick a lane. They're very fast. They do a ton of damage. They're accurate. And so I guess the developer's like, oh, well, you can air combo them. That, <laughs> that makes up for everything. Even though they don't give you an opportunity to air combo them. 
Meanwhile, they can combo you more than you can combo them. It's just a very frustrating experience. God damn it, stop. I hate. Let me begin the air combo! You fuckers! God! There's way too many enemies. There's just, like, not an adequate amount of time to do anything against these bastards. Game, what the fuck? I wanted to air combo the big guy. Let's focus on the little guy! Fuck off, game. Like, if it... Game! Why do they just crowd this goddamn arena? God damn it. Why? Right. Let's do it. God damn you to hell. Game. I wanted to focus on the fuck off. I'm not having fun with this. It's stupid bullshit. I'm sure you'll get it this time. Enemies should not be attacking this quickly for this goddamn just enemy rush. It's just frustrating. It's just annoying. Quit! I hate... I hate. This is terrible design. This is just genuinely terrible design. Where enemies just randomly can do more damage to you than out of... And it knocked me out of bounds. Game! Fuck off! It also is annoying that it begins with a goddamn cutscene! A game... Yeah, you're a cunt game. I'm trying to stun, then air... You are fucking dumb game. <laughs> Why do you give an enemy a charge that's just purely accurate? I hate you. This is so dumb. I hate this. There's just bad design entirely, forever. It's just frustrating bullshit. There is no difficulty here. It is just, we're gonna throw enemies at the player. And then what? Well, we're just gonna throw enemies at the player. Maybe if I used a different breath, but I don't know. Because they never really give anything. Oh, fuck off. Again, the enemies are way too aggressive in this game. Way too aggressive. And they should just should not be able to block. Like, oh, but you're gonna combo them to death. Yeah, that's what it is. It's called a beat em up. The game you're making. Dipshit. Oh, but the difficulty. Fuck your difficulty if it ruins the game. Of which it is. <laughs> It is becoming a contributing factor of extreme annoyance. A game I would like to be able... You, again, they should not be able to combo the goddamn player. Not with this level of design. Especially because they don't really give you... ...any time to do anything. Ah, shit. Like, maybe if the, uh, the little guys were... ...less aggressive and gave more breath... ...maybe some stuff... 
God, you do way too much fucking damage. And you do... I hate this. Like, lower the amount of damage these bastards do, I swear. It's mostly that. Please stop. Especially because they can fucking combo. That is the most annoying thing. Game, game, you fucker. <laughs> God damn you. The fact that they can combo is just a sin. The fact that they can combo is just so utterly rotten. God, there's so many of them. Quit it! Quit! Stop! God damn you! They should not attack this quickly with that much goddamn damage! It is just baffling. Quit comboing out of me! You should not be able to attack me out of my attack game. I am comboing this specific enemy. This should not be Ultra Instinct Goku from Fighter Z, where he's able to combo out of hit stun. Stop! Look out, world! I hate. And the thing is, like, I couldn't even r realistically go down there because they constantly were spawning the enemies that have a projectile attack. Which means if I jumped off to get, like, other resources, I risked being air-shotted out of the sky down to my death. There's just way too much going on for the overall gameplay there that it's just, like... Not very satisfying to suffer. Eh, uh, speaking of suffering, instant death. Oh, never mind. Aha! Magic. <laughs> he tried to he tried to hit me before the cutscene, bastard. Uh, so we're gonna... A little annoying that they <laughs> pull that. <laughs> like, Now, this is a boss fight I can kind of get behind. Wait! I can time stop here, too. I'm a fool. It just never felt necessary to time stop in this segment. Or, like, this kind of boss fight. Darn it. And we beat the assassin again. Assassin out classin'. But yeah, that, that enemy barrage is just like a bit too long, but it's just not conducive with how it was just done. We have to wait for the elevator to come back. Again, way too many times where the enemies can combo you... Way too big enemies who are, like, boxing you in to, like, lead to that comboing. And just, like, way too much damage for all of it. I feel like there could just be a minor tweak. And you could maybe make it, hmm. I wonder if I can actually go there. Ah, there's another elevator. Hmm. Probably from that elevator, I can probably... Yeah, because there's more elevators around me. Because honestly, it, that arena was surprisingly probably too small. <laughs> for what they were throwing at the player. Because like, honestly, it was just the big guys that were the problem. Like uh, the mounted combat dudes. Because they just did too much. They comboed. They were able to break out of your combos. They did a ton of damage. And they just 
bond them like it was going out of fashion at the end. It also didn't help that, like, uh, none of the other elements aside from fire really felt like they would be useful there. Maybe ice, but even then, ice kind of gets in the way when you actually try to start fighting the enemies again. It has weird, like, uh, interruptions to it. So sometimes you'll throw an ice at an enemy, but then you won't be able to get a full air combo out of it. Or you'll hit them once, and then they're about to hit you back. It's just like, it, it's not consistent enough. Fire, at least, uh, to the main, like, enemies was consistent enough to, like, interrupt their attacks and deal decent damage. But there was just way too much going on for that arena. Just way, way too much. Really, I think it was because they spawned so many enemies so quickly. If they had, like, slowed down the... Ah, darn it. Speaking of slowing down, haha. -ha. Now I have to wait for my time stop to come back. <laughs> you just bleg. Amusingly enough, though... I still prefer that, like, super annoying arena to all the red boss fights. Because, again, I could actually do stuff and learn, and it wasn't just... Darn it, I am always too late for that. <laughs> but the red boss fights from Hero's Tale were too... Just bleg. <coughs> Because at least I had, like, some agency. Even if they were trying their hardest to take that agency away through pure annoyance. Darn it. I think they're doing the thing again where they want me to hold out on my double jump in this game that eats my double jumps. But yeah, overall, that uh, boss arena thing, well, not even boss arena, but enemy arena... Just needed a few tweaks to not be utterly horrendous. Even if it is still better than both of Red's boss fights from a hero tale. Because, at least with that, if you knew what you were doing, it can kind of go fast. Red's boss fights... Drudged on. And again, some player agency. Just felt that they were going too hard on the, we have to make it difficult. How do we make it difficult? Lots of enemies and damage. And again, like enemies that we only were just introduced to. I'm not sure if that's dangerous to touch or not. Oh, hey, save at least. Alright, there's health at the other end. Hmm, lots of big guys. And, ah, the wargs. With their auto lock. Ah, crap, the guy went invisible. I hate the wards in their auto lock. You stole away from my. You stole away from my diddly tang air combo. How dare. I, do, I don't even know what the electricity is. Jesus. Oh, it's because of the invisible guy. Oh, I apparently can't really do much against. That's very annoying. They steal away my... Oh, Jesus. Oh, darn it. 
Making an invisible guy have an AoE attack? Kind of annoying when there's other enemies around, game. Why don't you try shooting some magic out of your face? I hate the game's penchant for throwing cutscenes before, like, in a, at a respawn point. Especially when there's no clear way to skip them. It's very annoying. Okay. Gotta combo you to death first. And again, there's the bloody... The problem is now I've kind of lost trick of where the invisible guy was. I just need to focus you the fuck down. And now, hopefully, the little guy's far less annoying. I still think, again, I think, like, the mini apes are the worst because they just have no survival instincts and they just charge in to break up my combos. They are the reason why land combos are basically non-viable. But yeah, flame is totally the go-to because it stuns and I can just easily spam it. There is no strategy in the late game, just overwhelming force. Strat this game is too aggressive, too crazy. There can be no strategy. The strategy is death. Like that guy, the dive bombers who just dive on in to break up your combo and deal damage. They're too dangerous. Like, I probably would use the uh, electricity breath a bit more if it weren't for the fact that I need to deal damage and, like, uh, like get enemies off me at the same time. And I can kind of, like, take this stun into combo where I can't with the electricity breath. Like, maybe if the, like, uh, Earth Flail did more damage, I would use that more. But it didn't seem to do a lot of damage when I used it on the pirate ship. And I need to be careful with my upgrading. When did these guys get teleporting, by the way? It feels like it came out of nowhere. <laughs> hey, Sparks, you can come out now. Uh, wasn't he by our side the entire time? Kind of cruel. Let's see. I guess we can upgrade electricity. Because that's like the next one that I would use more. Maybe. I do like that there's a little bit of leniency with these lasers, where you don't have to do it perfectly. You can slightly get hit by it. Or who knows, maybe it's the game glitching out. Hmm. Gonna look down here in case they hit like a mask. I just hope that... Also, another question. Oh, I get it. I was about to question why the Draugr came out to play, and I was like, oh, it's because we're going to the Well of Souls. And they're the souls that are coming out to play. I hate that it eats my double jump so often. That was like my main critique for this game overall. And maybe the taking away of camera control. 
game I would like to turn around <laughs> the goddamn camera. I know you have good intentions of wanting me to look and see at the main platforming. But I want to turn around in case you're hiding things from me. Huh. So I'm gonna, I am gotta smack that with Earth Power, obviously. As the icon. Oh, hey! Last Health Mask. So before I activate that, need to get the Earth Mask. Or, the Earth Mask. Flame Mask. Health Mask. The fiery red mask of health. Is this gonna be another arena? Nope, just gotta climb. Lots of candles. Why do dragons even need candles? Hmm. Oh, doesn't want me to jump there. Because the main thing is I don't want to activate the scene transition if there is one. I want to get the mask. Maybe if I go this way then. Because there's kind of hidden rock croppings that I almost didn't notice. It's because they're hidden. Hmm. Nope. Does not want me to activate it. Okay. I thought I... Since it had the icon of the Earth power, I thought I had to hit it. But the answer is no. But hey, I have more health now. Huzzah. I just need to... Then again, it kind of feels like this is the way you were meant to go. So it's kind of a given health mask, but still. Or, hmm, then again, those... Hmm. I thought maybe I could light the candles again, and that would do something. I don't know. They focused on the statue and the symbol, so I felt like I was had to do something. But I guess not. Hope there's not like a secret ending. He's like, aha, you fool. Oh, dear, we're in the eye of the mountain. Didn't realize that at first. Is the big old swoosh mouth going to be... Like where the throne room is, and we need to fall down the sucking hole. Also, I just remembered, Spyro can fly. Why do we need to, like, glide so much? What is this? It looks like the entrance to a horrible pit of despair, of which we will probably never escape. Well, we so gotta go in. Go inside to be sure. <laughs> Whoa! He is so weird. He is Sparks, and your brother. I wonder why the statue had the Earth icon, specifically. Are we going to fight Cinder again, maybe? The better question is, what's that smell? Death? Well, it definitely looks like the throne room. And it is the throne room. Quite uh, Lion King's scar up in here. Well, that's... How dare you have a mag MacGuffin crystal? I've made it this far, haven't I? Yes. You've been quite elusive. And I have known that all it would take would be your miserable Amity for Cinder. What's Amity? <laughs> How tragic, really. But she could be the one to destroy you. Ah! The nightmare never ends! You don't need to do this, Cinder. Just like old times. Eh, not really. You were far bigger last time we fought. Lol. 
valiant effort. It is just not Cinder's game at all. Are you gonna be a retread of the pirate boss fight? Well, I'll be, you can't because you don't have a hook or a Gatling gun, but maybe you can substitute your crystal for it. Ah, oh, nope, you have swords. Oh, oh, just like everything's gone. That's not good. But I do have my time stop power. Darn it. And he teleports away. All right. Your anti-air is annoying. Especially because you took away all my breath. Darn it. Is this a force loss battle? I hope it is. More than likely it... Oh, darn it. Why do my air combos do nothing? And, of course, he still has his swords. Okay. Oh, damn it. It's an annoying battle. Where they have, like, very specific qualifications of what they want you to do. I might have to look up a guide for this. Oh, fuck you, game. Why does he have anti-air? You take away my breath? Game... <laughs> Giving him a teleporter is just overkill. And he can combo me, because of course he can. Oh. How many times does he do that? <laughs> Game! It averted the rule of three, how dare you? Like, oddly enough, I think these boss fights are a bit too... Like, uh, unlike... Uh read from A Hero's Tale, because at least in A Hero's Tale, they were structured. These ones, though, are very out in the open, and seem to have, like, a few moments where, like, that didn't even hit me, game. Dang it. Ate my double jump again. It just seems random when he decides to, like, uh, actually do his pogo stick attack. Why spawn him in if I can't hit him? And, of course, that does major damage when it lands on you, because, eh, try to get extra damage in on annoying boss, how dare you. God, what moron designed the cutscene design? Like, oh, the player has to watch this every single time, but we're not gonna tell, like, the player how to <laughs> dodge the cutscenes. Game I would like to actually play. I'm trying to dodge! Fuck face! Why does he get a teleporter? Uh, 
It honestly feels like this is more... I can get like one hit in per teleport. Kinda. Okay, do one, back away, do one, back away, do one, back away. Is it just random how many times he jumps? <laughs> and again, he just spun around. Game. I'm trying to get as many hits in because I want to suffer as little as possible, but it's just like pure RNG it feels like. There's just like no way to actually get in close to this guy normally. Again, it's just like everything feels re It didn't even hit me, game! Fuck your hitboxes, you asshole. Everything is random. There is no consistency. Because again, some moron is just like, you have to play it this singular way. It's just annoying. But I'll take this. I'll do one hit. <laughs> Snipe him out of teleport. Ah, and he hits me. Is there just, like, no way to actually dodge his attacks? And he just lo So the last one seems to just auto-lock on to you. Which, that's fun. Again, why is it double cutscene? I'll just walk away, because you're boring. And there's no real way to do, like, the, the Draugr attack pattern on you. Just got lucky on that pattern. Game. Game? Would you actually fuck off? It's just like... <laughs> Who designed this? A five-year-old? So basically, I have to play it eternally safe and not get extra hits in. Oh, I tried to do my breath attack. So yeah, I'll try to play like a petty little bitch and wait until he does his... Hunt down goddamn pogo stick attack. And it's just locked on. And they and he just automatically attacks after he breaks free? God damn the designers were just shit. Come on. It is not that hard to design an enemy attack pattern, you Fox. He does thing. Telegraph thing. Allow player to respond to thing. Give player opportunity to react is most important. But is apparently the main goal, of, like the opposite of what the designers of this game wanted. The designers did not want the players to be able to respond in any way. So I'm, uh, luckily, if you combo him from behind, then he'll just get pissy and teleport instead of try to react to you. This is just do not engage the boss until the designated hit boss time, which is just boring. But it's like the go-to design for the ape bosses of this game. Try to be creative and... Hit the boss at your own time? No, no, no. That's bad. That's what bad players do. Only good players don't interact with the boss at all until designated boss fight time. Designated boss fight time is only time to fight boss time.
Because, like, with every other boss, the best way to fight them is to get in and use the time stop to, like, swirl around them to get as many combos off. But this guy, nope. He's the only one that's, like... Uh, it's like, he feels like he was designed by a for a different game compared to all the other bosses in the game. And I think that's why it's thrown me for a loop. Because, really... He's kind of designed, like, once you actually start, again, the do-not-play-game-other-way, only-play-game-this-way design philosophy. Once you actually give in to that, it seems pretty fine, but, again, <laughs> definitely suffers from that only-fight-boss-this-way, no-other-way, when hilariously defying that seemed to be the best way for every other boss, except for Arboric. Arboric is the only well-designed boss in this game. Because it's like an actual learning curve with him. This guy, just annoying. Because you defy the logic of all the other boss fights. Ah, time, huh? I stop time. I throw you into cliff. What, what did he? What even was that? I I held up my wings, and then what? And ah, your crystal broke. Good for you. And you lost your hat. Are you dead? And now it's the peak of the eclipse. Am I going to become like the host for the evil spirit because purple dragon? Oh! Is that actually what's happening? Uh. Okay! He went Looney Tunes! Never go full Looney Tunes. Where did these powers come from? What is happening? Um, I, I do not know what I am doing! I'm just beating him the fuck up! And now, Looney Tunes! The charge! Finally, the charge has a purpose! I'm so happy to be... I, I... Supercharged by darkness! Come on, quit teleporting and fight me! Fight the dragon! Fight the dragon! Fight, fight the dragon! <laughs> Face the power of darkness! I'm gonna- now I get to use the fury swipes! Seriously, how are you teleporting? What is this magic? This is all very wacky and weird. I fear he claw him. He runs away. Huh. Your eye beam does less damage than anything else. All right, I really shouldn't do that then. How are you summoning explosives too? Again with the Looney Tones. At least it doesn't seem to do damage. Oh, what? I was actually flying up there. Ah, uh, damn it, fall that. Damn you, with your laser eye beam. 
Also, did you just, like, fashion all the lasers off of yourself? Did you imbue them? Ah, uh, here goes the Looney Tunes again. Just embrace Looney Tunes. Why give me combo power? Ah, uh, oh god. Damn Looney Tunes! Get into my spiral game! Oh wait, no, I'm fighting Crash Bandicoot as an ape. That's what I'm doing. If Crash Bandicoot was an ape. What are you waiting for, dragon? Finish me. Am I actually gonna? With the power of darkness? <laughs> coward. I am no coward. I am a monster. <laughs> Probably. Oh! Do I actually... Am I... Oh! I need to do this! Uh, it's time for Dark Power Fury! What is gonna happen? Are you gonna become the good guy to fight the evil Spyro? Or are you just going to... <laughs> Toll of the bell? Just get obliterated, I guess. Aside from all the, like, combat combat, uh, first conscious murder for Spyro. Murder! Murder what's coming to happen in here. Also, Spyro did not grow with the power of darkness. Maybe it's his purple. Stop how? He's very angry. Was that all it took? Huh. What have I done? Uh, you killed a bad guy. You're with threats. I'm sorry. I couldn't stop. Uh oh, that's our only way out. Harness the power of darkness. Now's our chance. And blast our way out. Just go. Get up, Spyro. We're not leaving without you. Usually I would say ignore. <laughs> But he's too weak. The power of darkness drained him, probably. Oh no. We're trapped. I felt I figured that the power of darkness would last a bit longer. Ride out this storm. Live to fight another death. How so, Chronicler? Get close to me. Now. What are we gonna do? Also, I just realized that, like, uh, uh, okie doke, what the hell? Cool effects. Is it like. What did we, did we avatar the last airbender of this shit? Also, I just realized we have yet to find. We, we did not meet Hunter of Avalar. We got a message from him. Did not come into play. And now... And the, cliffhanger to end all cliffhangers. <laughs> huh. And a vocal song. Hopefully it's not copyright. I don't know what to think, because when the story actually got going, the story was cool. But it did feel like it took a while to actually get to the story. 
And it sadly feels like... Like, uh, how many levels did this game even have? Because there was the temple attack, there was the swamp forest, there was the pirate ship, there was the chronicler sanctuary, and then there was the well of souls. So five levels. And it sadly felt like the swamp and pirate ship were both filler. So it's just like, because like, why did we even need to seek out the tree? The chronicler was like, you must go seek out the tree. And then all that was, was to get us kidnapped by the pirates. But that even felt like tangential because even though Cinder was also captured by the pirates, it's not like we freed Cinder from the pirates. That was uh, Gaul and his ape men who invaded the pirate ship to capture her and just wreak havoc. But very interesting that it ends on a cliffhanger. And it seems like we just full on went Avatar. Especially with how the Chronicler worded it, it's just like, like, weather the storm or something. So, huh. How the hell is the third game going to begin? Overall, again, I still think it's better than Enter the Dragonfly and a Hero's Tale. But I feel like there was like too many parts that were a little unforgiving. And I can definitely see why it's considered the hardest of the trilogy, if what I've heard is correct. Because they did like refine the combat which was nice but then they used that to then make the enemies far more aggressive and add in far more like troublesome elements to the combat which could be cool but it was just far too unforgiving man kevin michael richardson just carrying Hmm. Oh, this broken soul. I that's what this is called. Hmm. Yeah, I have no idea what the third game is going to entail at all. Again, I wish that there was more story story, because again, the pirate ship in the swamp felt a bit filler. Not sure what you would like. Hmm. Like, do? If I would, like, if you somehow gave me the power to perfectly enact my will upon this game's story, I think what I would have done was maybe instead of going to the swamp like, ah, you have to find this tree and that went nowhere. I would instead think like, yeah, have Spyro tell Ignitus I'm having these dreams and then, but not have anything specific. Just like, oh yeah, there's, I've been hearing the words of the Chronicler or whatever. And then Ignitus says, you have to go after Cinder. Because, it, at the very least, she could be in danger at worst. She could be taken under control of the Dark Forces again. And then you see her get captured by the, the Sky Pirates. And it's like you invading the Sky Pirates. And again, I would have the Sky Pirate level be a bit shorter. So you crash the pirate ship and that begins another level. Rather than just falling asleep and being carried by a giant turtle. <laughs> well, for stars, for the next game, Cinder will finally be playable. Huzzah! Finally. Because, again, I feel like... I, I, I just... 
I just got an idea. What if this game was, like, tiered? Like, I, I'm not sure, like, again, they probably didn't have much time to make this game, considering it only came out a year after A New Beginning. But again, if I could enact my full will on this game, split the levels between Spyro and Cinder. Tell a two-tiered story. Like, have Cinder have her own mini-adventure, like a Cinder campaign kind of thing. You play Spyro, play, or maybe, hmm, maybe play a Cinder leaving the Sanctuary. Then it uh, swaps the Spyro for the Sanctuary Invasion. And, like, yeah, just, like, jump between Spyro and Cinder to tell, like, an interesting story that way. Because, and actually use her. Because that's one of the main issues with this game, is that it doesn't feel like it really took advantage of the fact that it was a sequel to A New Beginning too much. But... There were just a lot of minor annoying things that were too, that were stacked up due to the fact that the developers wanted to enact harsher difficulty, it felt like. And it just felt like, again, they had a specific vision in mind for how you defeated the enemies and just didn't telegraph that to the player. Arboric is cool, but they didn't tell you at all that you need to catch the different body parts on fire. The train ripoff was terrible. The Draugr King ripoffs were fine after I learned how to cheese them. The Pirate King was kind of annoying, and I feel like I never really fought him properly because <laughs> I cheesed him. And then it felt like Gaul couldn't be cheesed at all. And you just had to play that specific game with him. And it felt weird because... All the other enemies, you had to engage them except for the train ripoff, but it was the train ripoff. We couldn't exactly tell too much of him. But. Oh, is this going to be a epilogue? Kind of hint hint of what's to come. Oh, hey, a better center face design, it feels like. Yeah, we total avatar. All our hope now lies with you. What happened to Ignitus and stuff? It will be a different world. How long are we going to be asleep? Know this. You are not alone. You have allies. Oh, hey, finally, Hunter of Avalar. Where were you when everything was happening? Very interesting, but again, the the plot felt a bit disjointed because they didn't really tell the player too much. Like, why are we worried about the Eternal Night? Like, sure, the Chronicler thing is a bit more obvious. Like, oh, the voice is speaking to you. Go find the Chronicler. But then, like, the steps to finding the Chronicler didn't feel very connected. The Eternal Night didn't feel like it really went anywhere. The Chronicler said, like, ah, but the evil spirit of the first purple dragon might be strong enough to escape, and then we get here, and it's mostly just fighting Gaul, and then, oh no, we're crumbling uh, time to Avatar. A bit weird? Bit weird, but... Overall... Like, for what it was... It was fine, but I definitely feel like it could have been better. I think A New Beginning is better than this game because it had... Like, while it had quibbles, it had problems, they didn't... They weren't really front and center a lot of the time. And when they were, they were quickly dispatched due to the game's design. It was nice and fine. But with this game, all the boss fights kind of suck. Oddly enough, except for the Elemental Dragon, which was just a... That's a thing. There are only technically three original fights in this game. And that was Pirate Guy 1, Pirate Guy 2nd Phase, and then Gaul. Which I guess technically Gaul is two phases. So technically only two original bosses in this game. Because Arboric was just a stone guy from the first game. The train was reused. The the Draugr King heavily reused. Cinder's boss fight was reused. 
which I wouldn't mind if there was other original boss fights that didn't suck. I still think the train boss fight was worse overall because it felt super jank. But the pirate guy felt jank. And Gaul was only fine after I learned how to beat him. And that was only after I had to discard how I fought everything else in this game. Because everything else, it was mostly beneficial to charge them and get behind them and combo them with the time stop. But this guy, because of his teleportation and stuff, you basically had to wait back, wait for your opportunity to fight, which no other boss fight really did and no other enemy really did. It doesn't feel like they really built up to it. Oh, to what I was saying earlier, like Halo 2 between Master Chief and the Arbiter. Kind of, yeah, I've never played, uh, I, I've never played Halo 1, 2. I did, I did play Halo 3 and Reach, but never played Halo 2. I do have the Master Chief Collection, so maybe play that someday, but yeah. I think it would have been cool if they actually utilized Cinder more, because she felt kind of wasted until the end. She didn't get to do anything. She ran away from the Sanctuary, disappeared until the pirate level, of which she's like, don't worry, we just need to pretend to fight and then we'll find a way out of here, immediately gets damseled kidnapped. Then we meet up again, it's kind of the same thing, it's just like, like, let me go to, like, uh, pretend and then I'll go for this spear, immediately fails, gets chucked into a wall. I do find it cool that Cinder was actually visible in the arena, like, while you fought, fought Gaul the first time. So that was kind of cool. I didn't talk about it at the, at the beginning or, or during it. I think there's a new game plus option now. Hmm, we'll have to look at that. Hunter is back in the third game. <laughs> Which is funny because he uh, debuted in the second game originally of the Insomniac trilogy. <laughs> How it would have been if the game had... Uh, if the studio had time and budget, basically. Because I think that's the main reason, is that this came out a year after, it, like, A New Beginning, so they probably didn't have time to make a lot of stuff. <laughs> I'm always laughing on bullshit of the arena. Really, it's like you joined your Gmod friend server and he spawns a ton of Combine onto you. Kinda, kinda. <laughs> the Dragon Volcano seems too uh, ominous to leave out of the story. It's a, you're not strong enough moment. Well, we did go to the Dragon Volcano. It just felt weird, because, again, the two things that really should have, like, I, it feels like they didn't really have too much of an idea of what the middle game should have be story-wise. Because, of, like, the Eternal Knight, and then, like, it just, it feels weird. It feels weird. Did we ever get all the quills? No, we missed some. Well, let's quickly check uh, the extras. What is extras? We have uh, dragon challenges. That's neat. That's a cute design. I like it. It's grown on me. The enemies. Kind of a cool design. Like overall. Even if it's kind of like a modification of the previous things. And the, like, one of the new enemies. Very annoying, these wargs, because of their super powerful just charge. Oh, I think I went the wrong direction. Because one... There is a lot of art to be unlocked, which is cool. <laughs> we can barely see Sparks' facial expressions because of the bloom. <laughs> There's Cinder, like... <laughs> I don't know why, but this art seems, like, better than, like, the 3D model. The head. There's just something about the head. And it's, like, it's kind of like they knew because they had an idea for, like, a better head, but... I don't know. Still a cool design. Ah, oh, there's mother and father. I find it amusing because in the Chronicler flashback art, Dragonfly Mama just had her mommy milkers out. Oh, hey! I guess this is, like, uh, concept art for all the games. Or, like, the first two games. There's the <laughs> turtle whale that saved us. There's the eldritch abomination whale. Oh, 
this is cool. This is cool, like, uh, concept art. But I guess I'll, like, slowly flip through these as I give my overall thoughts. The collectibles is kind of cool because, again, the quills feel like a low-stress collectible where you're, like, if you miss it, it's not, like, horrible, terrible, ah. And, and even the dragon masks that increase your breath and health, like, were decently placed and not terrible, even if I think I missed two. Ba 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 two uh, breath masks. The fiend boss fights are kind of cool, even if they were kind of wonky from time to time. Oh hey! I I don't think this was ever really shown, or maybe I missed it, or it was a very vague detail. But that's cool. Oh, I guess nobody else got the armor treatment. Yeah, nobody else got the armor treatment. Well. But yeah, the concept art is super cool. I am envious. Wish I could draw like this. But, ba ba ba. Overall, it feels like a weird thing where the overall gameplay was muchly refined. But they kind of were stagnated by a weird obsession to, like, increase the difficulty with that refinement. On top of the fact that, like, uh, the story felt kind of cobbled. The story felt very... very wonky for being a middle one. Because... Like, they, sh like, say, like, ah, oh, the Eternal Knight, but they don't really explain too much of what the Eternal Knight is until late, late, late into the game. And then, even with that explanation of what the Eternal Knight is and what it threatens, doesn't really, it doesn't really do anything with it. The Eternal Night is where the evil souls can potentially return for a night at the Well of Souls. And maybe the first purple dragon who was evil might return. And... <laughs> and then there was just, like, super-powered evil side Spyro for a moment. And, like, I thought, like, there would be a bit more drama of, like, knocking Spyro out of his super-powered evil side, but then they just kind of didn't. Ah, neat. That eclipse, that eclipse sort's very neat. So yeah, I think the, the main things that they needed to do with this game is... They needed to include Cinder more, probably through, like, a Master Chief Arbiter level, like, swap idea. Like, you, one level of Spyro, one level of Cinder, for maybe ten levels if they could, but, again, probably budgetary, uh, well, yeah, budgetary and uh, time restraints didn't really allow them to do that. Like, you never know what happened to the pirate guys ever again without Scab. Even if it's a brainless chump being manipulated by two parrots. Honestly, I don't think they put much thought into the pirates. It's just like, hey, let's have pirates. And then we will never see the pirates again. Which is kind of funny because the pirates level is kind of cool because there's the kind of foreshadowing of Hunter of Avalar. And you meet Moliere again and you get to save them again. That is kind of cool. But then it's just like everything else feels superfluous with the pirates. Again, here's Cinder immediately gets kidnapped. It's just like... If there was more time... 
they definitely, like, again, I feel like five spiral levels, five cinder levels, if time and budget allowed, would have been cool. But even if they could only have five levels and could only play a spiral, like, even then, I would probably be like, hey, maybe allow the player to play as cinder once. I wonder what Dragon Challenge... <laughs> it's just what, Dragon Challenge 1, 2, 3... I guess maybe those were the quills we missed. I want to see. Hmm. Hmm. Oh, yeah, completed temple. So loading that seems to load up new game plus probably. Oh, wait, now I remember. Uh, you need to complete the dragon challenges to use Dark Spyro in New Game Plus. Oh, that's a cool reward, at the very least. <laughs> you can record, uh, record what you uh, missed if you don't want to stream for the Quill Collection. I probably won't replay for the Quill Collection because it seems that the Quill Collection is only unlocking the rest of the challenges which then unlock Dark Spyro, which is only good for New Game Plus, which a very nice, like, replay bonus, but it's not really something worth to go on my way to do because that, like, even though this is only, like, a 10-hour game, that's still a lot of game to play through to find quills to just be able to replay the game again with a power-up for me. I appreciate their inclusion. It's just, it's not going to motivate me to replay it. But yeah, overall, this is definitely worse than A New Beginning because A New Beginning has the benefit of it being, well, the beginning. The story is kind of laid out for you, and it's very simple. Like, even if it is just talk to Ign Ignitus, go save a dragon, talk to them, go save a dragon... The story is very simple, and it feels like you're making story progress each step of the way. Even if I still wish that there was a bit more, like, focus on the story of, like, Spyro and Sparks' early life, more story cutscene of them leaving and talking, more character interaction. Again, the end of A New Beginning, I wish that we actually got to saw Cinder's... Oh, got to saw? Got to see... Cinder's reaction to being free and Spyro saving her. And like, I think that initial reaction would be would have been cool to see. But mostly, A New Beginning's only flaws is that it's like doesn't do anything super exceptional and I wish that the story was a bit smoother and it had a bit more, but otherwise it's a very, very good game. With this... It's kind of the same. I wish there was more story. I wish the story was more refined. I wish the kind of... The kind of sort of... Filler level of the swamp was swapped out for something that better led into the pirate ship. And I wish that the pirate ship was maybe resized a bit. Like, hell. Cut the pirate level in half so there's less going ship to ship throwing switches and flying on flying rowboats and have us play as Cinder for a little bit, maybe. Like, I don't know, just like, something. But the ending is very intriguing because, again, this is a middle sequel leading it. Like, it is the second game out of three telling a linear story. So it is kind of interesting that it ends on such a, like, I think the cliffhanger would hit harder again if they actually explained this game's story better. Because, again, it's like, the Eternal Night. What is the Eternal Night? A night of which the evil spirits come out to play in the, the, the Well of Souls. And there was an evil purple dragon long ago, and maybe he'll return. It's just like, but none of that really comes into play. Gaul seems to act like it is like, oh, our dark master will return, and blah, blah, blah. But, like, nothing is explicitly shown. Maybe it's kind of implied. Like, I, I, I don't know. It's weird. Again, wish there was also a bit more with Dark Spyro. 
and like Cinder knocking him out of it. Cinder and Sparks working together to be like appeal to him, like return to a Spyro, stop being evil. But yeah, basically this is just an issue of refinement and uh, adding to certain parts to make the story flow a bit better. Because otherwise it's kind of go here, do this without much purpose compared to the first game. Because even then that's go here, save Dragon, but it felt like it had a good purpose. But this one, in hindsight, it kind of falls apart. Go find a tree. The tree tried to kill you. Now you're kidnapped by pirates. And that le led directly to the Chronicler somehow. Like, I guess that could be a joke in and of itself. <laughs> like, because again, I made the joke that Shakespeare had a habit of having his characters get kidnapped by pirates to move the story forward and, like, uh, get him out of a, a written-in corner. So maybe there is a kind of joke there where the chronicler, surrounded by history and stories, is like, like, ah, I see Spyro is going for the Shakespeare gambit of moving along through pirate <laughs> kidnapping. But aside from the meeting Moliere and the Hunter of Avalar foreshadowing, the pirate ship just, like, feels weird and out of place. So yeah, overall... It definitely feels like some parts could have been expanded, some parts could have been compressed, and it feels like, again, th it doesn't feel like they really explain the story well. The Eternal Knight, but it's kind of vague. The Purple Dragon, maybe he'll return. Uh. Dar <laughs> Spyro becomes evil for a moment, but then not. It feels kind of all over the place in that respect, which is kind of sad. So, like... Hmm. Uh, final rating? Hmm. For the final rating, if I gave A New Beginning an 8.5, because I think it's really solid, really good, really fun, no major flaws, but no major, like, exceptionality, except for the fact that this is Spyro being cool, uh, this would probably be a 7, because it's still decent, probably still worth playing, but it has a decent amount of issues. The story isn't what it could have been. It's kind of bleh. Remember the pirate section was the place which most people gave up on the game. Which, yeah, it feels just extra, because it doesn't help that the pirate section begins with a boss rush. It's just very bleh. Because remember the place you were fighting a second time Scorpion Riders? Those people didn't remember the hint on how to defeat them, and it was never mentioned again. <coughs> Meanwhile, I managed to remember it. But it is weird that they introduced this mechanic of, oh, they're blocking. Use your, like, air combo starter to break their guard, but then they don't apply that to other guarding in the game, which is weird. But, yeah, that is a bad... In hindsight, that is a definitely a bad design decision because, like, it, ha it also kind of goes along with the fact that they're kind of overcomplicating the combat where enemies are far more aggressive. They block your attacks to stop you from comboing them more. And it, they break out of your combo sometimes. It's just kind of sad with that. Hmm. That is kind of sad that people gave up because... They introduced a mechanic for one enemy that isn't even shared amongst other... Just that block. It's weird. That is definitely weird. So yeah, this is probably a 6.5 to a 7. Maybe a 7.5 if you really push it. It's just like there's so many like moving factors. If you forget about the combo starter, you basically can't kill the scorpions. And then there's the other parts, like the the train ripoff is terribly designed. It's worse than the actual train from the first game, which is very weird. Like, that's also another thing. I feel like A New Beginning had more broken up segments. Like, there was a, flying, a few flying segments. There was the train chase, which is kind of cool. So, yeah. I definitely feel like this will be the worst of the Legend of Spyro trilogy because it's a bit too try-hard in the difficulty and the design just doesn't check out. Because here's the thing. 
when you're making a game, it is better to have it be too easy than too hard. And throwing in weird design decisions like this one enemy will have a unique mechanic that is never mentioned again, especially because you only run into them into like in that like single section, it's probably a waste of development time and should have just been cut. It's just very bad. Especially because they were just taking like the Scorpion Riders from the first game and threw... Yeah, because there were scorpion enemies from the first game. They just brought them to this game, modified them, and made them worse because they overcomplicated it. Because that's the thing. A new beginning is simple. It isn't overcomplicated, and all the issues it has are, like, very simple and go by quickly, although maybe I just got lucky. Who knows? This game, it, it technically the gameplay is improved on, like the normal, like, uh, comboing beat em up combat is a bit better. I think the breaths are more interesting. Even if I do think that the electricity breath is a more fun breath, I feel like these are more interesting, even if I don't think they were balanced well. I, again, I think they should have made the breaths a little bit more... Because here's the thing. I think because the breath... Like, uh, since it still had a breath meter, I think they should have made it so that the breaths were overpowered so that it became like a worthy resource to use. The earth flail should have been cooler and there should have been like more times to use your breath to do stuff. And the time stop mechanic, I think the time stop mechanic was the best thing, even if it just kind of came out of nowhere, nobody comments on it. It's just, you are able to do this power, Spyro, for you are a purple dragon. And then it's never really used for anything beyond platforming and maybe cheesing combos. Hmm. The lacks of maybe of enemy AI behavior variations for the pirates. Maybe. Like, it's just, it's very weird. All of the bosses, with few exception, are reused but kind of made worse from the first game. Except the Elemental Dragon. The Elemental Dragon was kind of cool. Even if it is, like, Cinder, but only slightly tweaked. But it's just like, eh. Again, definitely worse than A New Beginning, but... If you keep in mind how to beat the Scorpions... It's still worthy enough to trudge through, but the problem is you still have to trudge through it, which is very disappointing. The story isn't as good as A New Beginnings because it, A, doesn't take advantage of the spring. Because here's the thing. When you make a, a, like, a trilogy, you need to springboard off of what the previous entry gave you. And this game didn't do that. This game needed to include Cinder more because that is the cool thing. That's kind of the cool hook. What is Cinder going to do now that she's free of the dark power? And just doesn't, it isn't really there at all. It's kind of bad. I do, also I think, it's weird. It also feels like there's less moments between Sparks and Spyro talking. Or maybe it's because maybe David Spade's voice is just so ingraining in those scenes that you it, this, the scenes feel like they took longer. But uh, the voice actor for Sparks in this one, I forget his name already, but Fry from Futurama, he did a decent job, pretty decent job. It felt more like Sparks was his own character and less like it was just... A, a voice actor or celebrity being paid to read a script. Even if I do think that maybe Sparks' script was not as good as the first games. I don't know. It's hard. It's also disappointing that the there isn't really much touching base with other characters. It's only at the beginning of the story. Talk to Cinder. Talk to the Guardians. Then you never see the Guardians again. That's kind of disappointing. Again, this, there's so much potential for this, but they just kind of dropped the ball with the story. I'm not going to harp on it much more, but 
they definitely needed to focus on the story more, and they definitely needed to focus on Cinder more. Then I think it would have... That definitely would have bumped it up a bit more. So, as a final score, I'm probably going to give it a 7, and it is only a very, very tentative 7. Because the difficulty matters of the Draugr Arena is just bad. Far too many enemies spawning in constantly. The two-tier, like, two-phase enemies were annoying. The mounted enemies were very annoying. Too much damage. Too fast. And they combo you a lot. It's just, like, very frustrating. A very frustrating battle that was. The own, like... The only bad boss fights I think there are... Are... The, the rehashed train, which was just terrible... And then the pirate guy. Mostly because I have no idea what they wanted from me for the most part. Because, <laughs> like... Also, if, if beginning to it, it's beginning to feel like the pirate level stretched on a bit. In hindsight, to the, fa to the point that, like, the pirate boss was split up so far apart, which was uh, kind of annoying. But... In hindsight, Gaul is a decent boss. It's just the fact that he doesn't fit the... It, he doesn't fit the mold that the game has given you. Every other boss that you fought was mostly one where you're kind of rush in, do damage. Maybe back off, rush in, do damage. But Gaul was more of a pattern boss. Which none of the other bosses in the game really was. With Gaul, you needed to r keep away, wait for him to do a specific attack, then go in and combo him, which no other boss really does. So that's why I think it's bad design, because the game tr at least trained me to, like, use time stop, get behind the boss, combo him, combo him. But then again, the only bosses like that were the Draugr King ripoffs. The executioners and uh, the pirate guy. So it's like, it's kind of weird. <laughs> again, when you make AI, test your AI in different situations, definitely. That's again why I espouse that it is better to have a simpler, easier game than an overcomplicated, hard game. Because difficulty is a very tricky beast. Difficulty only works if it is refined and you are damn certain. That's why Dark Souls works. That's why Elden Ring works. That's why Sekiro works. Because they refine the difficulty and kind of have defeat baked in to a degree. Defeat is kind of baked in so that if you die, you respawn, but you get more experience from them. So yeah, it's like, defeat here, it's just, uh, again, <laughs> the fact that uh, so many annoying death parts have many cutscenes before you begin again, it's just why? Just have me respawn in the arena. Especially because the to skip a cutscene, it feels like you have to spam the shoulder buttons for some reason? It's very weird. Again, probably most of the problems arose due to crunch. They probably didn't have too much of a budget, and they probably didn't have much time to make this game. But even then, they luckily did better than A Hero's Tale or uh, Enter the Dragonfly. Enter the Dragonfly is definitely the worst Spyro game. I'm trying to think. <laughs> Let me see if I can rank the current Spyro games that I've played. Hmm. I can't give, like, a, a definitive one. I think Spyro 2 from Insomniac is the best. Then I think Legend of Spyro A New Beginning is number two because it's telling a cool story and it's simple and fun. 
then I think Insomniac Spyro 1 will be in third place because, it, again, it's, like, very simple, very easy, very fun. Then... Then it's basically a punch-out between Eternal Night and Spyro Insomniac 3. Because I don't really remember much about Insomniac Spyro 3. I remember getting annoyed at some points. It also felt like, it, like it's been a long time since I played it. Maybe if I played it... More than likely, Insomniac Spyro 3 would be better than this, but... I don't know, like the tantalizing possibility of if this game was remade and made better, like, intrigues me. It's like, what it could have been sticks in my mind and kind of elevates it somehow. Hmm. But how do you think to change AI on pirate side to make it more engaging or divi diverse since they're pirate? Like, honestly, I don't really mind too much that the pirates are just a reskin of the normal enemies, considering that's kind of like what Spyro 1 had a lot, where most of the enemies were just monkey ape guys, but with a different coat of paint. I don't mind that as much. Especially because they kind of did have new mechanics, like the higher tier pirate captains had magical parrots, I think. They were kind of weird, but overall, I don't mind the sameness of the enemies. I'm more annoyed by like the failings of the enemies. To me, I would rather have a lot of samey, simple enemies than attempted diversity, because attempted diversity of enemies and making them varied in their attacks and designs is what got us the game-ending Scorpion Riders. Again, simple over overcomplicated. Simple is better than overcomplicated. And that's kind of why I don't mind the pirates being very samey. That, that's just me. Ba -ba -ba -ba. T -t -t -t. To wind down, again, they needed to focus on the story more because it feels like it's kind of vague. And it feels meandering for the, like, main... Because, like, there's the main... There's the first mission, the attack on the sanctuary, that was good. The swamp was filler. The pirate ship... It had some cool stuff, kind of had story, but definitely needed to be refined. Like, I don't know. The pirate ship feel, like, drains the story somewhat. Pirate ship kind of cool, but also kind of stifles the story. I don't know, it's weird. I'm trying to think overall. But yeah, they needed to define the Eternal Night more. They needed to, like, showcase why, like... Then again, I get... I don't know, it's weird. Because the Chronicler wanted Spyro to stay with him so that he wouldn't be in danger from what was to come and felt like what was to come was impossible to stop. But he wasn't going to stop Spyro from trying. But we didn't really see what it was that was going to come about. And plus, technically, doesn't Spyro saving, like, Cinder and freezing the three of them, Spyro, Sparks, and Cinder, in a crystal, kind of imply that Spyro did change the future because Cinder didn't fall back to darkness? But I don't know. And also, again, I feel like Dark Spyro should have been... I just, I just realized something. If they did do my idea of levels for Spyro, levels for Cinder, Cinder's final boss could have been Dark Spyro. Mmm. I, I, I wish that Legend of Spyro could get a remake. Because if they took the base structure of A New Beginning, Eternal Night, and then eventually Dawn of the Dragon, they could do such an awesome refinement of these games. Uh, but people are... Ah. And the sad thing is, I can't even say that, like, the criticisms of this one are, like, wrong. Any criticism of A New Beginning is stupid, in my opinion, unless you have very specific, reasonable ones. Because they only, like... A New Beginning is fine, even though it's not Insomniac. 
A new beginning is fine even though it's not a collectathon. A new beginning is fine even though it's not a, mainly a platformer. Eternal Night kind of fails on its own merits, though, because that's the thing. I feel like too many people judge the Legend of Spyro, at least from what I've kind of vaguely heard. People judge the Legend of Spyro for what it's not rather than what it is. Uh, the Eternal Night very much could be judged for what it is, sadly. Way too many cracks, way too many overcomplicated bits, unrefined portions, way too aggressive AI for, like, what is presented. Like, I don't know, it, it feels weird. It almost feels like they designed the game, then cranked up the difficulty without refining the design what came before. It's weird. Ba -ba -ba. But yeah, overall, definitely, like, the funny thing is, this doesn't, like, it doesn't feel like I'm trying to f word my things properly. The only aspect that makes it feel like it was crunched and rushed is the reuse of bosses. Everything else just feels like it could have been poor design and bad decisions. So, at the very least, it doesn't feel like it was time crunched compared to previous time crunched Spyro games. But, yeah, I still had fun with it. It's just that a uh, kind of disappointing of the certain failures, the certain cracks in the armor. And, like, again, there was potential here, and it's just sadly untapped. But next time, we will be playing The Legend of Spyro, Dawn of the Dragon. And we'll be able to see how this trilogy ends off. Because I, know, once again, know nothing about the lead of, like, the, this upcoming game. So, no idea what to expect. No idea where the story is going to go. Again, it's like, oh, the cliffhanger is cool if only, like, the buildup was better. But it'll be interesting to see, like, the finale. Like, if we'll be able to see what happened to Ignitus and the other Guardians. It'll be interesting to actually interact with Hunter of Avalar. Considering that he was, like, hinted at and only appeared in the epilogue. And, yeah. I do uh, appreciate that they threw in the collectibles. The quills are neat again. The breath and health little pickups are neat. But yeah. I'm just like, yeah. Again, like, I want to ramble so much, but yeah. Well, uh, time to move on. Next time, Legend of Spyro, Dawn of the Dragon will be interesting to see because the Chronicler said when next we awaken, it'll be to a new world. It'll be interesting, like, maybe we'll wake up and, like, oh, yeah, the evil master has returned, and you've been asleep for, like, five million years, which could be interesting. It's just, like, again, like... <laughs> At the very least, it has a very cool springboarding step off that they're kind of going to have to be forced to springboard off of compared to a new beginning to this one, so that's at least something. And it'll be interesting to see. It'll be very, very interesting to see because if, the, like, considering that my Twitch chat told me while I was playing A New Beginning that Eternal Night was the hardest of the trilogy, I think we're in for smooth sailing coming next time. And I do believe it'll be very, very nice. But it'll be very interesting to see what the story will do. Like, obviously, they, they have... They have to do things with Cinder next time because she's playable at the very least, thank God. If they didn't make Cinder playable in the entire trilogy, I would have rioted. Oh, it would have hurt. But good to know that they're going to have her be playable in the next game. That'll be cool to experience. But yes, yes, yes. 
Next time, we will be streaming Legend of Spyro Dawn of the Dragon on Wednesday at 5 p.m. Central Standard Time. And, yeah, it'll be interesting to see what lies in wait. Because here's the thing. So long as the beginning and end of this trilogy is good, I think I could very well still say, like, overall it's a good package. Oh, I just hope that they stick the landing. Just hope it, just hope it. But uh, enough rambling from me. Ramble, ramble, ramble. It's about time that we said good night. But yes, if you want more from me, dear people, you can go to my link tree, linktr.ee slash wings, or direct links in any bio description or link place on the various sites. Because it holds everything that I do. Like my edited content YouTube channel, which I need to make content for. Bleh. My streaming YouTube channel that all these streams are uploaded to after the fact. My streaming Twitch, if that is more your speed. If you want art similar to my little character in the corner, then you can follow me on various sites and social medias like Tumblr, DeviantArt, Newgrounds, Blue Sky, all over the place, all the different sites that I post to. And if you want to read stories I've doth written, then the links to those are also in there. N now Brain is saying that I should try to write a Spyro story. <laughs> like, basically, a refined novelization of Legend of Spyro. Maybe. Maybe. God, that would be a project. But, uh, finally, in my link tree, there should be a link to my Patreon, which is just a little donation box for anybody who's feeling kind and affluent enough to do so, to help me out ever so slightly by throwing some dollary dues my way. But yes, but yes, thank you very much for watching, everybody. Watching me curse out the, the poor sections of this game. But remember, be you, be true, be happy, but most importantly, be kind and stay hydrated. I hope to see you dudes next time, where we will explore Dawn of the Dragon. Bye-bye.